Hey guys, welcome to Random Phantom. Today's video will be a short little Windows customization guide on how you can make your Windows setup look kind of like mine. So like with the full screen menu and that sort of thing and the matching colors. So first thing you want to do is you want to right click on your taskbar. This will be to get the full screen menu and you want to be able to fit more icons on your taskbar as well. So use the small icons and I would recommend locking the taskbar and you can also keep the peak to preview desktop so that gives you this option so when you go over to the bottom right you can peek at the desktop then you go over to the start menu options so you want to select more tiles on start and then show app list and start menu and then you start full screen so basically instead of having your desktop wallpaper cluttered full of desktop icons you can have the same effect but cleaner with a full screen start menu so that is how you can do all that and of course you can go over to your all apps and you can right click on an app and pin to start if you use it a lot or whatever and you can drag it to wherever you want and you can have different categories so like these are like my apps that use the internet that are basically not browsers but yeah up next, you want to get an app called Falcon X. I mean, that is this application right here. And basically what it does is it makes the applications that you have open get centered on your taskbar. So like if I close this window, you can see that the icons will recenter themselves. Now there's supposed to be like a purple F in this menu over here but it's not showing up there must be a bug with it right now but the program does work it is a free program so it's worth installing if you like having the center taskbar icons I mean it's similar to what you would find on a Mac but yeah you go over to the Microsoft Store do a search for Falcon X so Scroll all the way, go back to the home page. Did the Microsoft Store just bug out on me and not give me a search icon? There we go. You just do a search for Falcon X and it should show up in the search results. You can find it here. Apparently, it's a dollar nine if you want to get it. It was free, I guess, but since I got it early, I guess I could have it for free, but it, it did show up here as a dollar nine. So it is a very cheap app is what I could say. So there you have it. If you want that effect, it's very cheap to have and it works pretty well. It may occasionally crash or bug out or whatever, but you can just restart it by going to the start menu you just, and then you can get to your task manager and close Falcon X if it bugs out on you. Up next we have two options for the animated wallpapers. So first off we have Rain Meter which is what I'm using right now and I added on a music visualizer that is linked to Music B which is my music player. But yeah. So if we right click on here, we can open settings, go to media player, you can see that here are the options for the media players. But this is a pretty nice little visualizer that I can have on my desktop. Another thing that you can do with Rain Meter is you can have notes. So like I put my computer specs here and it's cleaner than Microsoft's implementation of it. And it also doesn't require a Microsoft account since those notes are stored locally in a notepad text file, of course. Whereas these ones might be saved in a cloud, but yeah. That is Microsoft's implementation. As you can see, if you want to make a new note, 
if you want to have it be transparent and blend into your desktop you don't have the options so like you can select different colors and it will just change the color of the title bar but that's about it so there you go that is how the sticky notes work but with rain meter you can have a nice convenient note just like that and it you can change the colors and all to make it all match so everything here has been changed so it matches my channel colors and all that if you don't want to use rain meter there's another program and it's called Plastuer, where you can have animated wallpapers. So if we right click here on my desktop, it does add a nice convenient way for you to access Plastuer from the desktop, which is pretty nice. But yeah. And you, what you can do with it is you can have it play back video files. So like if we go over here, we select my channel's video, we hit save and hit center as you can see it will play the video file of course there's a gallery where you can have options loaded from the internet some of these work better than others so like here is one with just letters and stuff and as you can see this one here is not sized perfectly for this desktop so you get a that little mini bar on the right since this is actually basically a modified version of chrome's that is set up to be on the desktop as an overlay of some sort but then you also have some others that work better so like if we select like this one here this one works we get this one's called cat fight if you want it but these cats look pretty terrible in their <laughs> pretty <laughs> kind of funny looking <laughs> but yeah that is just one of the few examples of some of the animated wallpapers you can have now this one is just a static animation there's some others on here that are actually animated with your mouse movements so like this one here is hail the old masters you can set that as your wallpaper and it will load it and as you can see when I move my mouse just a little bit it moves around moving up and down changes how big the circles are here these black circles and all that if I move left and right it rotates them and that changes the flow of how everything moves on the screen but yeah as you can see it can get to be a little bit laggy but yeah and of course you can have it run on startup, you can have it maximize or minimize or whatever, you can have it. So like if you're playing a game, a full screen game, you can have it paused animations so it's not using up as many resources. But there you go. If you want to close Plastor, then you can go down here and you right click and you hit exit. Now Plastor is available for a one-time fee of pay of what you want so if you want to pay forty dollars you can do that or if you want to pay like one dollar because you can't afford to give them forty dollars and you can do that too that essentially makes this program cheaper than one of the popular alternatives that you can get it's called wallpaper engine now this one you got to get it on steam and all that if you don't want to have to have steam download it on your computer or open or whatever you can get plastic and download it directly to your computer and install it and it will take care of itself basically so there you go SEC powered by chromium gamer friendly set it and forget it it will remember your wallpaper it can start up automatically and of course it supports the gifts videos green dream scenes webgl web pages even regular images but yeah now if you want to set regular images you might as well just use windows built-in function for that but whatever up next you want to go to your settings and under personalization you have these options for a wallpaper 
and the built-in ones where you can add your own or you can select a solid color and if you want to add like a specific exact color which is typically what I like to do I like to have it match perfectly that is the random phantom blue it's just zero red zero green and 50 blue for this hex code of hashtag 000032 you can select that as the background just like that and you can go over here to colors and you can select your accent color and you can do the same sort of thing there too so I have it set to FFB 600 that is the exact hex code of the random fandom signature gold color that you can find on my channel but yeah of course once we reopen the reopen ring meter then we have it running but yeah now if you want you can use plasterer and ring meter at the same time but I don't have them set up just to demonstrate I'll go ahead and run both of them at the same time no not personalized but plasterer Now, like I said before, Plasteur can eat a little more resources since it is based off of Chrome, but it's not going to eat like resources like browsing the web what Chrome would do. I mean, it is more resource friendly with that, but it's not loading up multiple tabs or whatever. Okay, we select our wallpaper. Actually, we'll go ahead and we'll just pick one from the gallery. So. Let's see what might be a good fit for our desktop. We'll go ahead and select this one because this one might actually not look too bad. And there we go. We'll go ahead and click the X, and as you can see, it looks alright. But yeah. You can still open up the notes and all that, and it works perfectly fine. I actually might have to go through and make a little video of some sort and let Plasteur open that so I can have Rain Meter going and this going at the same time. Since I do have more resources now, since I doubled my RAM, but yeah. And Plasteur is gamer friendly, so if we like go over here to change wallpaper, we go over here to settings, you can see that you can have it pause or whatever, or run at Windows Startup or maximize, whatever. But yeah, so like if you maximize the icon, it will pause the animation. If you have a full screen game going, it, it can pause the animation so it's not eating up resources. But yeah. And then of course once you get back to an application then it will return back to normal. So right now we have it maximized. Let's just peek at the desktop. Okay, maybe it's not going to work like that I guess. Hmm. Maybe they have some bugs here that they would need to work out. Let's go ahead and let's see. Do I have it set to pause? Pause all monitors. Let's select that option. Apparently it did not pause, so whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's still not eating up a lot of resources, as we can see. I mean, I mean, it would be the Chrome process, I would think. But yeah, seven percent is not really a whole lot. I mean, Rain Meter is actually itself eating more resources than Plasteur is, so that's a pretty good sign right there. Now, as for the memory usage of all those programs, if we go over here to our Task Manager, we can go ahead and show off the usage. Plasteur is eating up less than two hundred megs, and then. We have Rain Meter, which is going to be down the list. If we go over to Details, 
scroll to where we find rain meter rain meter is eating up less than 100 megs as well it's eating up about 89 megs so there you go plaster eats up just a little bit more memory than rain meter does but yeah so there you go and as for falcon x its usage is very very low it's using only like 8 megs and that's all it needs to center the taskbar icons but yeah so there you have it that is my complete miniature windows customization guide i didn't really go in depth on like how you like code all these skins or whatever like you can manage the skin you can edit these files here and depending on what you edit it can mess it up or it can make it look good but yeah all the documentation for rain meter is available on on google if you do a search for rain meter you should be able to find rain meter's website and then there's a documentation area right up here to where you can get documentation for rain meter and I'll put links to all these programs down below now, as an extra bonus I'll show you two browser applications that I like to use my main browser where I like to browse the web is Vivaldi edge I use it quite a bit still as well now I have edge is set up to basically be my throwaway browser so like everything that I browse in edge automatically gets deleted so like all my browsing history and cookies and that sort of things that will help reduce tracking and that sort of thing and then everything that I want to log into and use and all that I can do it over here and I can also do it over here in biscuit biscuit is a special kind of browser basically you can add an app so you click to add an app and then you can go through and you can add the web apps here so like you can add your Facebook account or whatever and basically it will load up the Facebook website but for every app you log into you can have it set so that it has a shared session or an unshared session everything I have is set up to have an unshared session so like I'm logged into my Google account right now I have multiple Google accounts for different things so this one is the one that I have my channel on and as you see I'm not logged into my other Google accounts here but if we go to my browser if we go to Gmail you can see that I'm probably logged into multiple Google accounts when I go to select the profile option or maybe I'm not I'm not signed in right now but normally when you're on a web browser and you have multiple accounts and you log into Google, when you click on your profile, you'll have your list of multiple accounts show up here. But with a separate session, you can have them all separate. So if you log out of this this one account, you're not logging out of all the other accounts. On a web browser, you would log out of all the other accounts as well. When you're logging out of a single account on Google, it logs out of all accounts. So that can be kind of annoying to have to re-sign in back into everything so with this it keeps all that separate so you can sign out the things when you don't want them signed into or whatever of course you can have different groups and it keeps everything nice and organized it even tells you when you have notifications as well so like i have notifications here as we see there's got people liking my tweets and all that Vivaldi browser likes my tweets. <laughs> Why well, look like Chrome or Brave browser when you can be cool like Vivaldi? So like I guess you notice when I open up a new tab page here in Vivaldi, I have my own customized wallpaper set there. I mean that is the cool thing about Vivaldi is it is super tweakable and all this functionality is built in by default. You don't have to download any add-ons or anything to do theme customization it's all built in right here you can even have it set up so that it integrates with razor chroma so like that's kind of a nice feature 
and then of course you can have Philips Hue theme integration as well but I don't have any Philips Hue buffs, bulbs so I don't use that but yeah you can even have it set so that it changes by day and night so if you want to have the day mode during the day and then dark mode at night you can do that but I like to have everything dark mode all the time this dark mode is just the best so that is Vivaldi there will be links in the description for all these programs and then the last program I have to show off is this program here I, mean, I already showed it to you but it's called Biscuit of course you can get it at eatbiscuit.com I think I'll go ahead and check eatbiscuit.com not ear biscuit eat biscuit damn it all right eatbiscuit.com kind of a funny website name but whatever it's where you go to download the program so there you go it's your browser buried in tabs like as you can see like everything here is just a whole shit ton of tabs with biscuit it keeps everything more organized and that's another thing is like if I'm browsing the internet and trying to also upload a video at the same time if I go to some site that just crashes the entire browser well it won't crash this browser when it's left open in the background doing its thing I mean, this browser can crash occasionally but it's not really going to be that prone to crashing it's the way it's set up is supposed to be set up so that you can just log into sites and then log out of sites and use them and that sort of thing it's basically biscuit is basically kind of like a free version of shift I mean, shift is a service that some businesses use to combine multiple apps to do different things so like you're tired of switching accounts logging in and out of stuff having a gazillion tabs in your browser well you can download biscuit now an application that I was using before is called firework but it has some issues so I had to change the issue was that Windows Defender would go off on it and call it ransomware when it really wasn't it was actually the built-in ad blocker causing Windows Defender to go off and Windows Defender didn't like the ad blockers, so like it just marked it as ransomware. So there you go. That's kind of an interesting thing to see is that Microsoft hates ad blockers and it will even lie to people calling it ransomware to try to get them to remove it. <laughs> and it will block the program from even loading in the first place, even if you add it to the exclusions list. So yeah. That can be kind of annoying. But as you can see, you can just go down here and you can download it. And you can add as many apps as you want. And Biscuit is free. That is the thing about Biscuit. Whereas this program here is probably not free. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure they got a little pricing plan somewhere. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. Right here is the pricing options. They try to hide that from you. <laughs> they don't put it up here at the top. They try to hide it from you. That way they can get you to download a program first. Only to find out that the feature that you're wanting to use is hidden behind some paywall. So there you go and this program is a subscription as you can see so like once you download this program you find out that you can only sign into two accounts which basically makes it kind of useless it's, it's supposed to be able to sign into several accounts all at once but here you can only do two so you can only have like two gmails or <laughs> one gmail and then one facebook account or whatever it means it's just really limited as you can see I mean, it's really, really just kind of dumb, <laughs> in my opinion. Add Google services. You can't even add Google services on the free version. <laughs> what the heck? I guess you're only tied to only having 
Gmail, I guess, and you can't maybe add YouTube to it. But hey, on Eat Biscuit, you can add YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I got my YouTube studio right here. It's just where I can go and change my videos and stuff. Update videos, that sort of thing. Upload videos. Change thumbnails to do all that management. But yeah, all that channel management. Well, that video's doing not too bad for my recent videos. Apparently not enough people watch my second montage. There's only five views on that second montage, but a lot of you guys enjoyed my Call of Duty Mobile Boom Headshot montage. You should watch the second one. It's pretty decent. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. You got Biscuit there, of course. Go ahead and show you this other one here and as you see what the pricing of this was it's $30 per year for the pro version or $100 per year for the advanced version which lets you do everything that you want as for firework it's kind of free as well now they do have this page over here we can see it's this is seventeen dollars for you, and then you can buy it forever. Now this is this is kind of a kicker here. This is one hundred fifty-eight dollars and nineteen cents to have it forever. I mean, it doesn't require a subscription. So as you can see, Firework is cheaper than Shift. <laughs> it, yeah, the free version of this is limited to two applications. Now, since I since I was kind of a beta tester for it, I have the ultimate plan, I guess, forever. So I guess that's kind of a nice thing. But since this program had bugs, I just had to leave it. So if I do find out that it maybe gets better, maybe I'll go ahead and switch back to Firework. But as of now, I'm going to use this program here. Now there are some also some other programs that you some of you might have heard of like Franz is one of them and then there's also Rambox so if we do a search for Franz you see Franz is a free messaging app for Slack, Facebook, whatever and then we also have what's that other one that I just mentioned it's not for the Rambox yeah Rambox Do a search for Rambox. You can find Rambox over here. Now, Rambox is available for free, but they only give you the community edition. If you go over here to this paid page, as you can see, Pro is $4 a month, which would be $48 per year. So, there you go. And as you can see, there's still quite some limits on the free version, only 99 plus apps, whereas the paid version here has 600 plus apps. And of course, you can add custom apps and whatever, but the thing about this app is that if you go ahead and you want to download this free version, you may find out that they don't update the free version. So if we do a search for Rambox Community, GitHub. If we go here to Rambox Apps Community Edition, we will find that the last update was quite a while ago. I mean, a lot of the stuff hasn't been updated in years. There's been a few commits, I mean, just like a, a fix for the Google Login issues, but they aren't really adding any new features or anything of that sort. Yeah, that is the community edition. They kind of just leave it off to the side and neglect it. And essentially, that leads to the some alternatives being made. So, like, 
for friends here it also has its own pricing as well if we go here to pricing you can see you can have three services on the free plan or if you decide to pay three dollars a month you can have six services if you want to be able to have unlimited you have to pay six dollars a month and it can eventually get expensive i mean just imagine subscribing to everything so you subscribe to netflix you subscribe to spotify you subscribe to hulu you subscribe to amazon prime or google I mean, youtube red or whatever you just start subscribing to everything eventually all that is just going to add up so having some free applications are pretty nice or some one-time payment applications but yeah friends has the subscription and they have limitations on everything nearly everything so that eventually lead to Freddy as a alternative friend pretty friends So there you go, as you see on Reddit, there's a post about friends. Now one thing about friends is you have to have an account with friends, which is kind of annoying. With Ferdy, the fork of friends, you don't have to have an account obligation and you also get dark mode. I mean, just wow. But yeah. It's just a optimized web interface. That's why it works with so many services. It's still better than having multiple tabs in a browser. This, you know, eventually maybe you're researching something or whatever. You you can end up with a ton of tabs, and then you're searching through your tabs just to find your Gmail account or whatever. And so that's why it's convenient to have an application kind of like this, where since a lot of stuff that people do is done online now, it would be nice to have those things separate. Reading articles can be done in a browser while your your work emails and all that can be done in a special compartmentalized browser where you can have different sections for your different things. But yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.